House lawmakers are expected to vote today on historic gun control legislation. It would funnel hundreds of millions of dollars into crisis intervention and mental health programs. The bill has already passed the Senate with bipartisan support. And President Biden says he will sign this measure if it makes it to his desk. So for more on that, let's bring in Nancy Cordes. She joins us from the White House this morning. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Errol. Good morning, Anne-Marie. Yes, this is poised to be uh, really a major milestone when it comes to gun safety. Probably the most significant bipartisan federal U.S. law, if it passes today, that we've seen in several decades. It passed the Senate last night. 15 Republicans, 15 Republicans joining all uh, 50 Democrats in voting yes. This is the result of weeks of closed door talks in the Senate following the Uvalde massacre in Texas. Lead negotiators for the bill told us Congress just could no longer ignore the mounting gun violence in this nation. I don't believe in doing nothing in the face of what we saw in Uvalde and we've seen in far too many communities. This bill is a compromise. It doesn't do everything I want. But what we are doing will save thousands of lives. So what does this bipartisan legislation do? Well, it enhances gun background checks for people under 21. It sets aside $750 million to give to states that implement red flag laws, which are designed to temporarily seize guns from people who are deemed a danger to themselves or to others. And it closes the longtime so-called boyfriend loophole, finally preventing someone who has been convicted of domestic abuse but who lives outside a victim's home from buying a gun. Now, obviously, this is nowhere near what Democrats were hoping for. It doesn't limit the sale of assault weapons. It doesn't li limit the sale of high capacity magazines, for instance. But uh, negotiators I've spoken to say that it's still worth it because it shows their supporters, shows the nation that bipartisan agreements on guns are possible after years of failure. All right, so this piece of legislation has gotten through the sort of the major hurdle, which was the Senate. Now we right. go on over to the House, where it is expected to pass, but I'm going to ask you to sort of yep. walk us through the steps um, that it's got to go through in the House and then eventually sure. getting to the president's desk. So this is on a fast track, Anne-Marie. The House is meeting this morning, the Rules Committee, to set the rules for this debate. The House will debate it quickly. And House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she's hoping to hold a final vote by midday today. And we know it will get universal or near universal Democratic support, but it could get a few House Republicans as well, despite the fact that House Republican leadership is whipping against it, urging its members to vote no. We still could see a few House Republicans go along with it, uh, particularly one House Republican who represents uh, the, the district that um, encompasses Uvalde, where we saw those 19 individuals, 17 children, two teachers killed last month. Um, and then it goes to the president's desk, and he is eager to sign it, especially because he's supposed to leave for a week for an overseas trip tomorrow uh, for UN and NATO summits. So if Congress can get the bill to the president's desk today, I think it's likely we'll see a signing ceremony either today or, or possibly tomorrow. Uh, Nancy, we know that Democrats wanted to do much more in this effort. We spoke with one senator from New Mexico, a Democrat, after the Supreme Court's decision, and he said the Supreme Court isn't really reading the room when it comes to the mood in the country, supporting, right. um, you know, sensible gun um, uh, legislation. What then might President Biden do after this bill? We're looking ahead to midterm elections. Could we potentially see executive orders on gun control that this bill does not address? Uh, well, the White House says the president would love to do more on his own, but they feel that he have, has done already most of what he can do without Congress. They say any more action will likely have to take place at the federal level um, via Congress passing legislation or at the state level. And obviously, yesterday was a huge setback for state level action when the Supreme Court, uh, a majority of Supreme Court justices uh, deemed that this 
this this New York law, 109 year old New York state law um, was unconstitutional. Um, that obviously sends a, a chilling effect to other states. But when I asked the president about this yesterday, he said that he actually saw a silver lining in the ruling and he felt that states could rewrite some of their laws in order to kind of get around this new ruling and, and still put some uh, common sense limits on where people can can carry a concealed weapon in this country, in particular states that want to pass laws like that. Uh, but as far as executive action, uh, the White House seems to believe that they're pretty much tapped out at this point and uh, any other action is going to have to take place at the legislative level. Mm. All right, Nancy, thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy.